Hi, I'm Suzanne LeBlanc, the Director of Clinical Relationships at the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, and we'll be talking to you about applications of Focused Ultrasound for Psychiatric Diseases. May was Mental Health Awareness Month, and I'm sure that all of you either know someone close to you or can name someone famous that suffers from a psychiatric disorder. Psychiatric diseases involve a disturbance of mood, thinking, and behavior. In the United States, over 47 million adults, or one out of five, suffer from a psychiatric disease, many of them suffering from anxiety or major depression. In fact, one out of every eight people over the age of 12 years of age take an antidepressant. Worldwide, 450 million people suffer from psychiatric diseases and two thirds never even seek treatment. It's the leading cause of disability worldwide with $1 trillion in lost productivity. Now, psychiatric diseases can be the result of multiple factors, either alone or in combination, such as family stressors, illness, or worldwide pandemic, or political issues, and can even be genetically inherited. Many of these factors can drive us to live like Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, unless we can improve on prevention and treatment. Currently, the COVID crisis is further exposing mental illness, and here are a few examples from a recent journal. Mental illness could be the inevitable next pandemic, a surge in post-traumatic stress disorder may be the new normal, and psychiatric patients may be among the hardest hit with COVID-19. It's hard to believe that even in the mid-1950s, very archaic procedures were being done for patients with psychiatric diseases. Things like a frontal lobotomy, where they used to stick catheters inside the frontal lobes with an ice pick. But interestingly, even around the same time, Lexel was developing a new approach that was non-invasive with focused ultrasound to treat psychiatric diseases. Current treatments for psychiatric diseases can be invasive, have side effects, patients can be non-compliant, or the treatments can be ineffective. These treatments involve things like medication, psychotherapy, brain stimulation with transmetic stimulation or elective convulsive therapy, and in severe cases, some patients may even need psychosurgery with either open surgical procedures, ablation procedures where they stick cannulas inside the brain such as RF ablation or laser ablation. They can also ablate certain tissues with stereotactic radiosurgery with gamma knife, and in other surgeries, they can actually perform neuromodulation with something called deep brain stimulation, where you still have to insert catheters into certain regions in the brain, so it's still quite invasive. The future of focused ultrasound is that it has the potential to be safe, effective, precision targeting, non-invasive, and potentially widely available to many patients suffering from psychiatric diseases. The Focused Ultrasound Foundation sought to explore whether focused ultrasound could play a role in treating psychiatric diseases. In 2016 and 2017, we started a steering committee with experts in the field to develop a roadmap. In 2017, we held a workshop with some of these experts and developed a white paper. In 2019, we had a focus feature on the role that psychiatric diseases could be affected by focused ultrasound. And in 2019, we had a webinar by Dr. Aitian on Back to the Future with Focused Ultrasound for Psychiatric Diseases and wrote a blog on the subject. In 2020, we just completed a comprehensive overview on the topic. Some of the first indications that are being explored for focused ultrasound with psychiatric diseases is obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and addiction. And as shown here, the targets in blue and red are ones that we can currently affect with focused ultrasound. And the way we affect these targets that affect psychiatric diseases is by thermally ablating these areas. That's taking the focused ultrasound machine and killing the tissue in this region, which has been shown to be successful with other more invasive procedures that I described before. So focused ultrasound can be used in dozens of different ways, but we understand thermal ablation the best other mechanisms of action of focused ultrasound that are being explored for psychiatric diseases include neuromodulation, where instead of killing the nerve tissue, we can actually make tissues that are not functioning enough function more or take nerves that are functioning too much and kind of slow them down a little bit. 
We can also potentially affect psychiatric diseases by opening the blood-brain barrier and letting medications into the brain. I'd like you to think of psychiatric diseases as more of a circuit and not just a small target. So although we can thermally ablate targets deep in the brain, as shown here in the colors like yellow and green and purple, we also wanna make sure that we affect the whole circuit where the deep brain structures connect to more superficial structures because it's really this circuit that's not functioning well in these patients with psychiatric diseases. So let's start with obsessive compulsive disorder. It manifests by obsessions, which are recurrent and persistent thoughts, and compulsions, which are repetitive physical behaviors. One third of patients suffering from OCD are treatment resistant, and risk factors include family history, early stress life events, and if you're unmarried. There was one young man that suffered with terrible symptoms of OCD since seventh grade. His homework papers were never perfect. He had to throw each one out if it had a little mark on it or a small crimp in it, and it really caused him excessive time in completing any task. He ultimately had to withdraw from college where he was actually studying math and physics because these obsessions and compulsions were overwhelming. Over the course of his short life, he had over 30 medications and various procedures that were ineffective. He was one of patient in a focused ultrasound study for obsessive compulsive disorder and is currently doing much better. Clinical studies have already been published using thermal ablation for obsessive compulsive disorder, and these were published back in 2018, and a recent one was published out of Canada in 2020. The Focused Ultrasound Foundation is proud to sponsor a study for obsessive compulsive disorder starting at Stanford and Brigham and Women's Hospital in 2021. Major depressive disorder is another example where focused ultrasound has great potential. These patients suffer from sadness, loss of interest, change of appetite, and thoughts of suicide, where these symptoms last for a period of at least two weeks. Over 50% of patients do not fully respond to medications, and 12% are completely resistant to treatment. Clinical studies have already been performed with focused ultrasound using thermal ablation and have been reported in 2018 and recently in 2020. Research with focused ultrasound in depression has studied the effects of blood-brain barrier opening. And in this preclinical study, biweekly treatments of focused ultrasound showed hippocampal neurogenesis, meaning there were new neurons that were growing in important parts of the brain. And that's very similar to what they have found with antidepressant effects. So this is very interesting preclinical research. Addiction is another psychiatric disease it is a compulsive substance abuse despite harmful consequences. Over 20 million Americans suffer from this disease. Over 72,000 deaths were reported in 2017, mostly due to opioids, which accounts for 130 deaths every day. Now, only 19% of patients suffering from addiction receive treatment, and 40 to 60% of these patients can relapse. It costs $740 billion in lost productivity and treatment costs. Clinical studies have just started using neuromodulation to treat addiction. Remember, that's where we take neurons that aren't functioning enough and have them function more or have neurons that are functioning too much and kind of slow them down a little bit. And this study is going on right now at West Virginia University or the Rockefeller Institute. Preclinical studies have showed that this neuromodulation for addiction has been successful and it's able to prevent addiction type behavior compared to a sham group. And as shown in this picture, neuromodulation is used in this area of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. It's deep in the brain. Other preclinical studies involving neuromodulation to a similar part of the brain possibly can be used for treating diseases like anorexia as was shown in this study out of Stanford, where the nucleus accumbens has been linked to decision-making and perhaps better decision-making will help patients with anorexia decide whether they should eat or not eat. So decision-making is very important and it involves this part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. And finally, we are going back to this concept that psychiatric diseases is a disorder of circuits. And this very interesting preclinical study out of Stanford showed the results on the right on this screen. They took 
an anesthetic and put it inside a nanoparticle and showed that they can cause specific temporal and spatial release of a drug into an area, which then causes secondary effects in areas connected along the circuit and thus map the functional connectivity of these disorders of brain circuits. In this slide, I'd like to summarize the advantages that focused ultrasound can have compared to other treatment modalities for psychiatric diseases. On the top part, it shows how focused ultrasound compares in doing thermal ablation or killing a part of the brain tissue compared to other ablation techniques. It's not invasive compared to the other ones, and it has a much finer spatial resolution of one millimeter versus one to five millimeters, and it's been shown to be equally effective to date. In terms of neuromodulation, focused ultrasound also has advantages compared to other invasive and non-invasive technologies. It does have that fine spatial resolution that we talked about, and again, it is non-invasive. So we can see how focused ultrasound can really fit into the armamentarium of therapeutic strategies for patients with psychiatric disorders. So in conclusion, focused ultrasound can bridge a much needed gap between risks of invasive surgeries and lack of effectiveness of current medications. It's non-invasive, it has precision targeting, and it could prove to have a lower cost and bring more patients into possible treatment. Thank you very much for your attention.